Hey everyone, it's Beth. I've been thinking this month about the difference between living as a child of God and living with more of what, what I think of as an orphan spirit. I know I'm a child of God. I know what John chapter one talks about. I understand that that means I've been things like forgiven and redeemed and, and reconciled and called and, and I'm loved. But my questions aren't really what comes with being a child of God. My question for myself really lately has been like, why don't I always live that way? Why, why do I sometimes, knowing I have all of that to access, make choices to live more with an orphan spirit? We brought uh, our most recent adoption, Tyler, um, to our family when he was 12 years old. And I remember just a few months after we adopted him, he was a seventh grader over at our local junior high and he was playing on the soccer team. And it was a game day and the way that they operated, they'd have school and then they'd have this like mandatory study hour. And then after that hour, they would get dressed in their soccer clothes and go out and warm up and play a game. And it was during that study hour, one of Tyler's new friends sent me a message and said, Tyler forgot his soccer shoes at home this morning and he said he can't play in the game, but I was wondering if you could bring them up to school. And uh, I went and looked where Tyler drops his stuff when he comes home from practice and I saw the soccer shoes sitting there. So I grabbed them and I jumped in the car and I took them up to school. And when I handed them to him, he goes, it's the craziest thing. I didn't know moms did that. Like I told them I couldn't play in the game because I didn't have my shoes. And they said, no worries, your mom will bring it. But he hadn't had that experience before. So he had no idea that that's what moms could do. And I, 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 I was thinking to myself, like, I think sometimes I forget that God does that, that, that this is the kind, like when I get to be a child of God, that he does things for me that I, I don't even ask him to do because I, I forget that that's what I get as a child of God. We, we get questions in our mind like, oh, I know he does that, but does he, does, it, does he do it for me? Would he want to do it for me? Does he see who I am? Does he know when I, where I've been? Does he know what I've been thinking? Like, are you sure for me he wants to do that? We have a young woman that we gathered into our family more than five years ago. And uh, she had been with us many, many years, and it was her 21st birthday. And I, I was having a conversation with her about her actual birthday that I was not there for, asking her what details she had ever heard about that day. And she was kind of uncomfortable with my questions. And Todd was in the room with us, but he wasn't really in the conversation. He was listening to me kind of kind of prod a little bit into her history. And he he's kind of salt of the earth, really. And he just interrupted me and he goes, hey, listen. And he looked right at her. He goes, people make a big deal like where you're from. I, I, it's, it's, I don't really think it's a big deal where you're from. I actually think the bigger question is where you belong. And I want you to know you belong right here. And really, there was something about him and his position of authority stating with such certainty that she had a place in our family that really lots of things changed in her on that day and have since. And I think when John writes that we get to be called children of God and he does it through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I think what God was trying to do was like settle those questions in our mind. Just make sure we know from the very beginning, listen, this is what this means to be a child of God. You have access. This is what I do. I'm going to do all kinds of things like save you, redeem you, call you, equip you, gift you, love you, forgive you. Like I, this is what I do. And now here's what you get to do. You get to live like a child of God. And I think when I decide that instead I want to live outside of that reality, I do things like get insecure or get jealous or compete or think I have to earn God's favor or I... I I get driven for the wrong kinds of things when inside of God's family, I'm loved, accepted. I don't have to earn anything. He, When he looks at me, he sees his righteousness. He delights in me. And what kind of family is that? That's, that's what God's family is. And because that's the reality I get as a child of God, that's the kind of environment I want to create in my home and in, in the spaces around me that people will interact with any of us and know that kind of love and acceptance, that kind of belonging that we get first from God.